Definitely knowing your arpeggios, knowing your triads. Uh, is key to knowing how to improvise and move uh, move across the fretboard. For example, if I was uh, playing on for Sephora, I could probably just use simple tried arpeggios and you know navigate through the changes. Okay. It's not the most amazing thing ever, but you hear the changes and it's a decent sounding solo just by using, I haven't used any extra note there. So that's why we really need to know our arpeggios. So here we've got our first triad, correct? Then our second one. Then another one here. So this, this is the way I like to think about it. So I like to have a main shape in mind. Of course, this will get more and more complex as you improve. But then I also like to have at least the first three strings covered. So as well as my main arpeggio, which is the, the filled in dots. I like to have, if you just read the first three strings, you know, from string one, I want to, I want to know my triads on that as well, so... Or... And then I can use them to connect the dots and play more arpeggios. So if you are an intermediate, even intermediate slash advanced, you're probably very familiar with all of this. So in that case, then you should move to having this basic shape in mind, and then move to strings two, three, and four. So I can read an arpeggio going from strings six to string one. So let's say um, vertically going up and down, but I can also look at arpeggios and triads going horizontally. So choo by choosing a set of three strings, for example, if I chose strings one, two, and three, I can play this whole thing horizontally. So I can choose this first one. Because if, if you choose that this first box, then you've got your one, three, five. Then, if you are very familiar with this set of strings, which is usually in your journey as a guitarist, the first thing you learn, the, the, the first set of three strings, then you would move to strings two and three, uh, two, three, and four. And then, obviously, you would have, let's see, this, this, and this. Then you'd have, strings three, four, and five. Again, this is really uh, great, great information for both people who are for beginners and intermediate. Even if you already know this stuff, this is really going and strengthening the foundation. So if we had then an E minor, perhaps. So now I'm thinking of an E minor, so. This is very 
powerful stuff because you can play nice nice solos here. was the ninth but anyway so I hope this is helping so far but and then see if you can compose a little solo just by using triads and then when you, when that's successful the next thing what you think you might want to do is adding your seconds so this is something you definitely want to have especially down here especially these two, uh, you will see there's one more here, but somehow, I'm not sure why, gypsies, and I say gypsies because they are the ones who basically invented this music, especially in the Dutch tradition. You hear them play these shapes a lot more than Django even. Anyway, they don't seem to be playing this right here much. For now, ignore the empty notes and play your arpeggio with that second. So you play one, two, flat three, so... See, we don't want to play this for now. That one on string two. This is something I play all the time. And see, it's, it's an arpeggio. You, you know, if you ask me, it sounds very much in the style. But another one that perhaps we want to look at is the sixth. Where do we have a sixth? Well, we have one here. And this is how you sound less toccolo. So then you can now play your arpeggio. One, three, five, and the sixth, perhaps ignoring the second then. this work especially starting from your triads so the idea is your triads one three five need need to be quite solid and then you can pretty much play anything you just need to add the appropriate extensions we we looked at it when we were looking at into dominant scales so a dominant arpeggio plus those non-diatonic extensions and so on and so forth but then again here to to play in the in the style you need your when it comes to minor chords, really is the second and the sixth. And so you don't really need to play anything fancy, or rather to play fancy stuff, you're still using triads. Just maybe, I don't know, instead of a B major triad on a B7 chord, you can think of an F major triad. So you're playing tritone. Yeah, so my recommendation would be to if you're sort of new to this, maybe your triads, because you can you can play nice solos just with triads. And then you add your extensions, which means you're playing then a minor six arpeggio rather than a minor triad or a minor ninth, which is what Stockholo does. See, in with with his solo in E minor, what he plays in E minor is basically just thinking of this. See that, that that box from seven to ten. He just has his triads down. Now he plays this, plays this one, plays this one, and so on. And again, I I know that also this could come across as okay, it's a lot because it is. But uh, and also me giving you a system to internalize it, it's just to sit down and, and work on it because there's you can tell you know there's probably a thousand patterns that i could recommend but it, i i think it's just about activating the our brain our mind 
have fun with it and then when we're enjoying it we're also learning at a faster rate at a faster pace you know so just a little bit every day we want um, minor triad major triads which we do now then we've got uh, augmented triads that um, we don't they're not a priority let's say and diminished triads are also very good diminished triads as opposed to diminished arpeggios let's write down the major ones so we'll do i don't know uh, b b major so we can you don't have to change key then to work in the key of phosphora so then you are using obviously e minor on the e minor chord a minor on the a minor chord and b major on the b7 chord now why is that uh, B7 chord is nothing but a B major triad with a flat 7 on top, so we can use a B major triad on it. So we'll put this to the key of B. See, all we have to do is actually move, uh, actually, starting off at 1. Yeah. We move our thirds by one fret, and then we get, we get a major triad. And yeah, so when it comes to the major ones, again, you go and learn your main shape. Again, the, the, the filled in dots are the main ones here. And same thing, you want to then learn your where your ninths, ninths are. So then... Again, this one is... In an arpeggio like that, you don't really play that one. So you want to do... To be honest, it tends to be played going from the, from the low pitch to the high pitch notes, then go back as an arpeggio. Although you probably will never hear Django playing an arpeggio all the way. But again, it's it's quite a simple approach. But I, I do it quite a lot. So personally, I like uh, triads a lot, and then my Phrygian dominant scale, Lydian dominant, and Super Locrian. Uh, I like that a lot. So that is, that is the main four four things that I play. Those three scales and triads, you can cover a lot of things. As, as I grow as a musician, I tend to use more and more stuff, obviously. But those things are the ones that are pretty much ingrained ingrained in my subconscious so they, they always come out and then you want your sixes as well for your major chord your major triads but then it's something you can work out on your own why don't we take a quick look at a diminished idea so for the sake of staying on for Sephora, what is a diminished triad that we can use okay c diminished then so this is your c diminished especially if you look at the filled in notes. I'd really like you to learn that shape and then learn how to use that for a while on dominant chords instead of the usual diminished seven, the, the fully diminished one, right? Because that's, we heard it too many times really. But rather, see so on B7. It's a pretty cool sound. And then, of course, you see, you can break it down and play portions of it as a make your own little licks.
So this is, take for example, from string four to string one. That's a Django lick. Or so is a Django shape. Right? So yeah, as I as I said, it's it's a lot to take in because it is, but it you could you, you should make your life easy by not stressing about it because it's just little little bit by little bit every time. So just have fun with it. The more fun we have with it, the faster you learn it. To understand this, we need to look at chords. So we have half diminished chords or minus seven flat five and then diminished chords but diminished in jazz is it's is short for diminished seven which is different than a diminished triad so a, a half diminished chord is made of these intervals Whereas a and you know, a half, when we use half diminished chords, is the two of a minor two five one, right? Minor two five one in A would be B half diminished E seven A minor, and diminished chords are one flat three flat five double flat seven. A double flat seven is nothing but a, a major six, but we call it. Double flat seven because we like seeing the one three five seven formula in chords, but it's nothing but a major six. And then we have a diminished triad, which is this. So see how that diminished triad, which is the last diagram on that page, see how it works on both, because they both have a one flat three and a flat five. Again, to do a quick recap, I'd recommend you just learn a couple of shapes starting from a minor e minor so, so e minor a minor then b major and use them for uh, just to have fun on the on the a section of for sephora see if you can memorize a few shapes and use them to improvise uh, if you're uh, quite solid, solid solid on them go on your diminished triads because they can it can really help to strengthen those shapes a, a little bit and then use them on dominant chords or or even on the half diminished chords, why not?